Hi, uh, today I want to talk about sciatica. Well, what is sciatica? The symptom of sciatica is basically the feeling of pain that radiates down the back of the leg in the course of the sciatic nerve. Other people call it radicular pain. It's essentially pain that starts in sometimes from the lower back, radiates into the buttock, thigh and down into the calf. Sometimes it can just be focused in the buttock itself or the back of the thigh. So what causes it? Well, basically sciatica is caused by anything that irritates or compresses any one of the nerves that make up the sciatic nerve. The commonest cause is usually a slip disc uh, compressing one of the nerves in the spine. So here we have a side view of your lumbar spine and your lower back, which is made up of these bones called vertebrae. Between each vertebrae, you have a disc, which is a soft tissue cushion that cushions uh, the two bones. The disc itself can weaken um, and tear, a fragment spills out and compresses one of these nerves. So here's a view that we have looking, cutting you across the waist, looking up from the feet. Uh, this is the back, this is the front, and this is the disc here. And this is the disc fragment here, uh, pinching the nerve. And then here we see that all of these lumbar nerves here eventually form the sciatic nerve and you get pain in that distribution. So the pain can also be associated occasionally with numbness or tingling down the leg uh, and in the foot. In some circumstances, you can develop some weakness of the ankle. But here's the thing, the majority of patients, most about 60% plus, will heal and settle down within the first six weeks with a total of 80% or so being completely better in around 12 weeks or so. So within that time frame, I certainly wouldn't do or recommend anything invasive. So certainly no invasive treatment in the first few weeks unless you start to develop pain in both legs or you develop weakness in one or both of your legs or ankles, urinary retention, so difficulty passing urine, urinary incontinence or numbness down below because the purpose of treatment here is to preserve your neurological function and stop any deficits like the above becoming permanent. As the pain starts to settle down, now's a good time to start doing some work with either a physiotherapist, osteopath or chiropractor with a combination of manual therapy and adjustments, as well as some exercises that you'll be taught to maintain good strength of your core muscles that support the spine. And that can help prevent future relapses or recurrences. So a quick note, if you are being offered a manipulation by either an osteopath or chiropractor or a physiotherapist, in my opinion, it's important to have a scan beforehand. Here we have a, a picture of a disc with a, 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 a spine with a bulging disc compressing the nerve here. And some of the manipulations they do um, by putting traction on the bones around your waist can help pull this disc off the nerve. But if you've got quite a large loose fragment that ends up occupying this whole area here, sometimes the disc can go the other way and start causing worsening worsening compression of the nerves. So it's very important to have a scan before letting anyone do any kind of aggressive manipulation on you. Okay, so now a few weeks have passed and things haven't really eased up. What do you do next? If you haven't already started doing physiotherapy or seen um, a practitioner such as an osteopath or chiropractor, that's a not an unreasonable starting point, even if so many weeks have passed. But then we have some invasive measures. I recently wrote a blog about when surgery might be a better option, but before we go into surgery, we can try a targeted injection. So here we have, a, again, the cross section of the spine here. This, this shows us the surgical instruments. But before we go down this road, we can pass a needle with you under sedation. So you're not really aware of what's going on, but it's not a full anesthetic. You pass a needle down towards the nerve and inject a mixture of local anesthetic and steroid around the nerve. That can help take down the swelling around the nerve and alleviate the pain. It's less invasive than surgery and therefore less risky. And this recent study here that compared patients having an injection for a slip disc versus an operation showed similar results. And therefore the consensus of the study is to try and offer it uh, to patients as a first line measure before considering uh, any surgery, as long as you don't have any of the neurological deficits that I described earlier, such as weakness in the leg, any bladder symptoms, or things like that.
So when surgery is indicated or offered, a common operation that I carry out is called a microdiscectomy. This is quite a minimally invasive operation. I usually do it under a general anaesthetic, but it's for a very small incision in your lower back, just enough room to get this very small, narrow retractor in. This is a view here across your waist again, so this is the skin of your back. Uh, we come through down to the bone at the back of the spine and fashion this really small window under the microscope. So my view is nicely magnified. Once we expose the nerve in the disc, you just shave away that disc fragment here that's bulging and pinching the nerve. So under direct vision, I can see that the nerve is nice and free and then we close everything up. This is sometimes carried out as a day case. Uh, or one night stay in hospital at the most, and patients are home the next day and mobile. You have a little bit of pain around the wound site itself, but generally the pain down the leg diminishes very quickly. I usually advise a few weeks off work just to allow the wounds at the back to heal up and the muscles to settle down. Um, even though you may not feel much pain, I just think it's best not to go back to sitting at a desk for long hours a day, as many of my patients do. Um, in that time, I would expect you to be walking around, getting on with day-to-day -day activities, but more importantly, engaging in exercises that the physi physiotherapists give you. Now, patients who come and see me have, have often done their research. They've been on Google and they come quite frightened about the risks of paralysis, incontinence, and so forth. Yes, these are risks, but they're extremely low. Overall, we see very good results with this operation, but it's very important thereafter to focus on maintenance. The core strengthening exercise I've described with a physiotherapist are really important to prevent a relapse so you get the best result. The goal here at the Spine MDT between me, my partners of physiotherapists, osteopaths and chiropractors is between us to find the least invasive solution that also gives you the longest lasting result. Um, your care is coordinated, that way I would have looked at your scans or one of our surgeons would have looked at your scans before any manipulation or injection or surgery is carried out. Um, if you want to find out more information uh, please click on the link below or email us or feel free to call us on the number below and hopefully we can help you. Thank you. Thank you.